So, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to get this to work. Still not. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay, so let uh, me first say something about uh, who we are. Uh, our um, uh, firm, IMSD is a data science consulting company which has been founded in 2012 and uh, we have customers in Switzerland and all over the world. And we are making prototypes uh, optimization for optimizations, inverse modeling, process analysis, uh, analysis and, and more. And uh, this on different uh, topics in the industry and for research. So in this context, we are also dealing with research aspects and um, something that is very important is data fitting. And um, the interesting thing is uh, the topic of this talk, uh, how can we be sure whether models uh, are good for data fitting? And we have uh, questions like, for example, are statistical tests enough? Uh, the answer is actually no. And uh, other questions like, uh, when we do, we, do we know uh, that we have what we, we need and uh, what uh, we should we make to uh, get all the necessary parameters? And uh, I want to um, show you what we have developed on a specific e example. So the, um, I will proceed like, as follows. Uh, maybe the most important points are the example which I will describe, then the uh, process of chi-square decomposition by degrees of freedom, which I will uh, explain, and how we can use methods to improve the model. So, uh, first of all, I, I would like to stress that uh, there are two different uh, points of view which uh, play an important role uh, when uh, you do data fitting, which is uh, quite well known, that uh, you have, uh, on one side, you have nature that is uh, dictating uh, what you are allowed to do, and on the other uh, hand, you have data, or say, the statistician, that um, will want to maximize the matching between, between the data and the, the models. And uh, the, he will want to have many sensitive parameters. And uh, at the end, the residuals should be normally distributed. And, uh, and uh, something that the statistician hates is having runaways. And on the other side, which is quite a contrast, you have nature, say, for example, theory uh, of physics, and so on, which will restrict what you uh, are allowed to do. And so you, have, you will have to justify these dependencies that you have in, in your models. And you have also to explain uh, the choices of your parameters, and you should uh, use as uh, few parameters for fitting as possible. So this is a, quite a contrast. These two points are very important. I will um, uh, also use them uh, during the talk. Uh, let's uh, look at the example. Uh, it's a project that we have accomplished for the Federal Office of Radiation Protection of Germany. 
And uh, you see uh, some project goals, and um, for us, the most important thing maybe is the modeling of, uh, of a contamination chart in the case of an incident which has impact on the action plan. So imagine you have a nuclear plant that uh, has an incidence and there is radioactivity uh, going away from the plant. Then you have uh, some uh, weather situation so that the radioactivity will spread out in a certain way. So you will uh, have on one side measurements and on the other side you will have models uh, for the propagation of radioactivity which might look uh, somewhat like this. You have on the right-hand side, you, you have data from the measurement, and on the left-hand side, you have here, for example, 10 different models of propagation. And you don't know uh, a priori which modeling is the best or the, the good one, if there is one. And, um, okay, this is a con constructed example. I can tell you that the, there is none of this model that is really precisely modeling the, the measured, uh, the simulated measurements. And this is uh, maybe quite an example, exa uh, interesting example now, for now. Uh, and the contamination chart will be computed uh, by using um, a weighted sum of the models. And the weights are preci precisely the probabilities that the models match the measurement. Um, now, this means that the weights are something very important, and so it's important to know how well each model will match the data. A method which is uh, quite uh, uh, used is the met method of minimum sky squared to fit data, and uh, you can uh, deduce um, a value for the um, goodness of fit uh, by using the so-called reduced chi-square, which is uh, just you, you take the difference between the measurement and the model squared divided by the variance, you sum up over all points, and you divide by the number of degrees of freedom, which means the number of points minus the number of fit parameters. And this gives you a value that should be minimized so that the model is uh, well um, describing your data. But uh, is this something that is really reliable to take uh, critical decisions? Well, the, an the answer is unfortunately no. Uh, I have here a pretty naive analysis which is a good example for that. Uh, we have the 10 models uh, I showed you before on this example, and uh, you see the uh, reduced chi square for every model, and the, there are some models that seem to be quite good because the reduced chi square is uh, in the vicinity of one, which is uh, what uh, we need. And, but uh, let us look at, for example, model four. And uh, if we look at model four, just um, uh, not very uh, precisely, we will have the feeling, well, this is not bad. Uh, it seems that the model is quite like the measurements. So the model is given by the colorings. If you have a dark coloring, this means uh, high predicted contamination whereas the points, the red points, are uh, showing the measurements. If you have thick red points, that means uh, high contamination measured. Well, um, this cannot be a good model. If you look at pre more precisely, you, you see that the model has uh, quite some con uh, contribution uh, north way. And uh, you, uh, you have uh, the, the data which are uh, um, at some places also where the model is almost zero, so <laughs> this, is, this cannot be a good model. Uh, in order to avoid having problems uh, with the wrong interpretations, I think uh, what is very helpful is making what is on the right-hand side. You see a chi-squared decomposition where you see uh, the local 
loci of the measurements, but now instead of the measurement uh, um, values, you have the chi-squared contributions at these points. And um, in order to have an impression of what is the information of the reduced chi-square, you need to uh, symbolize that you have here, for, for example, one fit parameter, so you have a little cross on one of these points where you have approximately the, the mean uh, chi-squared contribution value. And this is uh, all you need. Uh, this information tells you uh, what is the quality of your fit, and you have a, a visual overview. So this is something that could be very helpful. And here you see that, uh, okay, if you can recognize it, that we have uh, lots of points with very small chi-squared contributions, which is not very good. You have quite some uh, variations between the contributions. So the, the thing to do is to increase the background cutoff uh, with increased uh, background cutoff, you have much less such points. And uh, of course, here you see that the, uh, the reduced chi squared is much higher, that the model is not so good. Uh, if we uh, redo the whole analysis for this uh, enhanced cutoff, we see there are. Uh, there is the model one, which is quite good, and we also have a, a little look at model six. Now, this is the second round. So you see how we proceed. Uh, actually, this is uh, something that should be, I think, very uh, standard. But the, the, the thing is uh, that uh, very often uh, there are some things that are, are omitted when uh, fits are performed. Now you see on the left-hand side, model one, on the right-hand side, model six, and on the top of the left-hand side, you can recognize again the, the measurement values, and on all other figures, you see the chi-squared decomposition. And uh, the chi-squared decomposition is actually all you need to, uh, to, make, um, to make, make a decision. But on the right-hand side, you see that the re uh, reduced chi-square is about, about, uh, about twice as much as on the left-hand side. But just by eye, you have the impression that uh, this is not so clear. Actually, the right model should be uh, quite well uh, in comparison to the left. You, you, cannot, you cannot really understand this. But if you, you look at the zoom, the zoom in the, the top corner, you see an arrow and you see, I don't know if you can see it, at the, uh, where the arrow is, there is a big red point. Um, the situation, you can see it by eye, is that the model is quite tiny there and you don't have a good overlap, so you have to make an adjustment of the center of mass of your model. That means you have to change your model you have to add one or more parameters. Uh, then, if you do that, now there is nature saying, beware, we have to be sure that this is compatible with theory. And uh, if you uh, take this into account, in this situation, this means that we have to make a rotation and a stretching of the model uh, very slightly. And you see uh, an example of model nine, how it works. And, uh, of course, you, you are able to reduce the uh, reduced cast squared in this way. And so in this way, if we look at the overall situation, it changes completely the reduced cast square pattern. And uh, the model 6 is now the best one we have. And uh, it looks like this, and uh, indeed the red points on the cascade decomposition look quite, uh, quite nice, not so much uh, var uh, variations. And uh, uh, there is something uh, more which can be very important, I uh, omitted this, uh, that uh, you can have different scaling ranges with diff different importance uh, during your fit. 
So if you want to, um, um, to have a, a stronger weighting of some ranges, you need to make some functional transformations. And uh, maybe this is uh, something very, very, should be very standard to make uh, such a linear logarithmic uh, transformation like here. This is a way to do it. And you have a threshold parameter, and this is actually the parameter you have to adjust. So you have all, all, um, one more parameter. And if you don't use the right value for this parameter, you see here on the right-hand side what would, be, would uh, happen. Uh, this would not give a good result. Okay, so this is, uh, these are some examples of how you improve your model and how you seek for uh, necessary parameters. And uh, putting it all together, you get the contamination chart like here. Okay. Um, because uh, I don't have uh, very much time anymore, I will go to the conclusions. So what are the most important things? Uh, obviously, the statistical tests are in, uh, limited in, um, in helpfulness. So you actually, you, what you need is a chi-squared decomposition. Uh, at least this is a good, could be a good method. Uh, the, a chi-squared decomposition by degrees of freedom. And if you visualize this, you will have a good help for practical problem solving, which is actually what uh, you need in, in the practice. And uh, the, um, there is another point. The theory should be um, uh, there. Uh, you should justify it by uh, the theory as uh, soon as you m make model adjustments. And uh, last but not least, you should not miss uh, important model parameters. This, as we see, uh, these uh, parameters could be hidden parameters, so it could seem to, to be a challenge, but uh, there is a systematic uh, way to handle it, and so um, uh, I would say coping with this uh, can also be a strength. So if you need uh, support or uh, have questions, then um, the um, best thing is to, um, to have um, ideas of the expert, and so I w would like to conclude uh, saying that for IMSD uh, there is no limit, limitation uh, due to complexity. Thank you very much.